DXB. It's in the game! This is a preview build of the Little Acre, so I obviously need to thank Curve Digital and Pewter Games for letting us have this early look. Now then, in my last video, I might have made some comments about having a review backlog full of, well, let's see now, dodgy point and clicks was the phrase, I believe, and now here comes the Little Acre to make me eat those words fairly thoroughly. And if you listen very carefully, you can just make out, carried on the autumn breezes, you can literally hear Ben's smugness about this fact. Well, you win this time, Ben. I mean, you just do. I cannot pretend otherwise. Little Acre is a really good point and click adventure. I know, I know. I am as surprised as you are. I really didn't think people still made good point and clicks anymore, but there you go. It can only be good news for elderly nostalgia fiends like me, because this is a great game that I get to play. Now I'm going to do the proper preview stuff in a minute and talk about the plot and the characters and the graphics and all that. And logically, I probably should have kept the big reveal that this game's good and everything. I should have kept it under wraps, shouldn't I? But I just can't hold back. This is a good adventure game! I can't believe it! I never dreamed this day would come! <clears throat> so, anyway, yeah. Back to the preview, eh? The Little Acre sees you take control of Aiden and his ridiculously adorable daughter, Lily, as they investigate the disappearance of Aiden's father, Arthur. The game switches you between these characters from scene to scene, and gameplay-wise, it's much what you'd expect. You point and you click on stuff, and you solve all the problems via the long-standing tradition of rubbing everything on everything until something new happens, while you follow a sort of steadily emerging narrative just like any other adventure game. And obviously, I can't talk too much about the story as I don't want to spoil things too much, but, I mean, there's a missing inventor and a shed full of weird contraptions, so... You probably have an inkling, right? As my hastily recorded footage is hopefully now showing you, both of these characters are beautifully animated, and there's just heaps of personality in basically everything they do. There's some really lovely touches in this game. I love the way the labels on all the items change when you take control of Lily, as the world sort of shifts to reflect this more child-centric view. And the voice acting for Lily in particular is really quite charming. Okay. I can fix this. All I need is a fresh bag of oats, a new bowl, and then to place a pot over the fire. Which I have to say was a relief, because, you know, bold, headstrong, imaginative child, that's a character archetype that often falls on the wrong side of annoying. Story is pretty good so far as well. It creates a nice mystery that you genuinely want to know more about, and most importantly, it does its job, which is to give you challenges to overcome and tasks to complete. And obviously, the real question with any adventure game is, how are those challenges and tasks? Do the puzzles make sense? Well, I'm pleased to report that yes. Yes, they do make sense, almost always. There's a really nice system to highlight all the interactive objects in the world, so you never really have to pixel hunt, and there's only really been one point so far where I got properly stuck and was unhappy with the answer when I eventually figured it out, which is a pretty good rate, all things considered. But also, talking of getting stuck, that brings me to easily my favourite thing about this game, and possibly a controversial point. This game has an automatic tell me the answer button. If you are stuck and don't know what to do, you can just hit this little prompt and you'll get a nice little hint. If that hint doesn't help, you can hit it again, and this time you're told precisely what object to use where to advance the storyline of the game. Now I have no idea how gamers will react to this system. I could easily imagine that for some players this is an outrage, a disgraceful example of the dumbing down of modern video games and yet more proof that games are all for babies now and oh, back in my day and full of cold gravel. Well, look, I'm sorry hardcore nostalgia guys, I think this feature is genius. Oh yes, yes, this feature is so good. Honestly, it kind of makes the game for me. It keeps the narrative rolling at a decent pace. It protects the developers from having to read the player's mind all the time when it comes to balancing the puzzles. It is wonderful. Everyone should just copy this. Please, particularly everyone who is making point and click games that I have to review, please copy this now. I want to marry this feature. 
Now, obviously this is a preview build, so right now the game just sort of stops after the first few bits, and that means, in the long term, I don't know if the game is going to suddenly jump off a cliff and turn dreadful later on. But I've got to say, I'd be very surprised if it does. This game has that veneer of quality about it that just makes me trust the developers. And I really feel like they know what they're doing. Now obviously all I can say is that what's here right now is really promising. It feels special in that same intangible way that the best of the LucasArts adventures did. And it's just brimming with bags of charm and bags of fun. Little Acre is definitely one to watch, and I'm already excited to keep coming back to these characters in a few months time and see what's added and learn more about their stories. So yeah, nice one Ben. Keep them coming eh? DXB. It's in the game!